Welcome to the CoinPros Crypto Talk Hour, hosted by Randall Parker Jr. and airing every Wednesday evening from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bringing you up-to-date news, prices, coin information, interviews, contests, giveaways, and much more. Tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Help us take money back from the state. Okay, so I am joined today with Joel and Tuomo of Crypto Radio, which is a really exciting project that I just found out about um, at the time. Well, this they're airing on the, or recording on the fifteenth, right? Air uh, shortly thereafter. And apologizing for the thunderstorms in the background as well. Uh, you might hear that on both ends. Uh, our guests are in Finland today, and they might be experiencing the same kind of weather. But um, so I recently just found out of this project, maybe two or three days prior to today, um, and immediately as soon as I found it, I reached out to the gentleman and said, you know, can we please have you on the program? This is awesome. And everyone that knows about Bitcoin that I've told about this project so far has been extremely enthusiastic, extremely over the top about it. So uh, I'm not going to delay too much. I'm going to get right into it. We have what's called Crypto Radio, um, which is being built or which is... Uh, maybe already built. We're going to find out exactly where they're at. But um, uh, from their website, Crypto Radio is a Bitcoin data transmission system that transmits Bitcoin transactions, blocks, and currency exchange data, does it in real time, and uses terrestrial television DB, uh, DBB-T transmitters around the world, which is basically Bitcoins in the air, uh, liter literally speaking. And they've been uh, written up on Slashdot, Bitcoins.net, and other, other boing boing and other places. Gentlemen, uh, is this what it seems like it is? This is Bitcoin without the internet, right? That's correct. Amazing, amazing. So, who started this idea, and when was it? When was the concept conceived? Um, I started this uh, project in uh, last March, and it started as a uh, ordinary Bitcoin node, and uh, I was experimenting with. Uh, the Bit Bitcoin protocol, and uh, it, the, the idea of radio transmission arose uh, in about a um, month uh, later, and I started to go, uh, go that way, and um, it, um, I, I cho chose um, to go with DVB-T, the digital TV broadcast. Um, uh, the, I the idea came uh, only a month ago, so it it has um, it, uh, the process has been some kind of incremental. First, I started is a uh, an ordinary Bitcoin client, and then uh, then I got the idea about the radio broadcast. Awesome. Um, so, okay, so where are we at in the project now? Is it is it currently functional or is it? Still formatting state, formative stage. Where where are you guys at right now? So um, there there's real uh, code written currently. Joel has been working on that, uh, and on the web page uh, he has listed the parts that uh, already have been done and what needs to be done. I think the deserializer part is um, that needs more work, uh, right, Joel? Yes, uh, the uh, serializer, the transmitting uh, part of the um, um, it, uh, crypto radio is uh, more complete. It can be actually used now for broadcasting, and uh, uh, that's why I, I'm, um, I'm co quite confident that uh, to, the system will work uh, till September when the broadcast really starts. Okay, so the broadcast is going to start uh, tentatively years later for September, and is it going to be one node, or is it going to be a, a, a number of nodes? How's that going to work? Um, it has multiple transmitters, and we have uh, 
one server which uh, transmits data to uh, digital uh, the terrestrial um, transmitter uh, transmit operator in Finland and they have uh, multiple towers it's about uh, 12 or something like that 20 uh, does Tuomo remember I can remember the number yeah I, I could check it later but uh, anyway uh, uh, multiple uh, places where the uh, transmission takes place and so on Right, and so I was on your website trying to get as much information as I could find yesterday um, before I even knew if I was going to have you guys because this is awesome for me to, to hear about. But um, So essentially you're kind of going to run like a pilot program, so to speak, is it in be in Finland and then from there to, to make that a test market and kind of take it from there. Is that the idea? Uh, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, the uh, initial pilot stage... Uh, is starting uh, on September and it will last for uh, two months and from there on if the idea seems like a good one and and uh, we get uh, we get the uh, feeling that people really want to use this kind of service then we can continue with more uh, with a longer period of operation and uh, that's the current idea gotcha gotcha Okay, so my first like first thought that pops into my head is to because we're as early in the program as possible into this interview, tell the audience exactly what you're looking for. So if anyone's watching this, they could jump in. Is it capital? Is it talent? What what does this project need right now to go forward? Press, what is it? Gentlemen? Is he all still? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Um, so uh, you asked that about uh, telling in brief what is uh, crypto radio all about? Uh, actually, no. I, I kind of I gave it a little bit of an overview at the beginning of the program. I want to we can get more into detail of what crypto radio is about. I just wanted to know what the project needed because I want my viewers to be able to. If I have a programmer or a marketing person or a designer or uh, an investor in in the audience who could reach out to you guys who's interested what are you guys all set or do you need something right now are you looking for help okay way? okay now I see now I see yeah um, I think we have um, we have uh, ta talented programmers uh, working on this uh, but what we need is um, um, we are looking for partners in um, financing and uh, for uh, going global with this and uh, the, the big issue is that uh, the broadcasting is um, expensive and uh, it costs about uh, 2,000 euros per month uh, to broadcast in uh, the current area in Finland and uh, it's, um, if going global it all, of course requires capital and um, the another uh, thing is uh, we need um, parties in um, other parts of the world who can help us to uh, find the broadcasters and get in touch with them. I, I just want to, I, I hope I'm not overstepping a boundary. I, I'm going to respond to what you said regarding the cost, but I had this brainstorm idea that just popped in my head. Uh, I don't know if it's feasible or if you guys are considering anything like this, but maybe getting some sort of uh, alt security or um, Bitcoin 2.0 um, security to where you call it like broadcast coin or like New Zealand coin or American coin or whatever and people could co-mine, you know, uh, dual mine or parallel mine that coin with their current mining so like, the network would just need a little bit of hash rate to be secure and it would have some nominal value but just as a means for like if you said well, like this certain tower needed 10,000 a year, if you could create a, a currency that could be funded even if it was like on um, the um, the Swarmcoin platform, like a crowdfunding for Bitcoin or for Counterparty, maybe you could possibly just fund, like kind of just tell the community, like, hey, every time we fund a new location, it makes Bitcoin stronger. So let's do this. You know, I'm not saying it's going to be a snap of a finger, but is that an approach you might take, or? Yes, we we have been uh, talking about this idea of uh, crowd crowdfunding. Uh, uh, 
new countries or maybe uh, giving people the opportunity to bid for their country to to, uh, to be included in the crypto radio project uh, and as we said uh, we need these contacts with the broadcasters uh, all over the world and after that uh, when we know who, who these uh, are then uh, people could uh, and we know the co real cost then people could bid, bid, bid uh, uh, for, the, for their own country. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that that's the whole point. Of, like, I kind of want to get out front and say, like, what does this project need? Because every project always needs something, whether it's money, whether it's partners, whether it's talent. So if you're listening or watching this program, uh, listening to or watching, what Crypto Radio needs is people who have some funding or some creative ideas on how to fund uh, this type of thing. Now I want to get into the meat and potatoes of what this thing is. Obviously, we already said it's a way to broadcast uh, blockchain information across. Um, it's a t I want to go into the, the technology of it a little bit. It's a, a terrestrial television signal, DVB, and you just decided recently that's the way to go. What is DVB, terrestrial television, and, and why is that the way to go? Um, DVPT is, is um, a broadcasting technique used in uh, the Europe and many parts of the Asia and Africa. And um, we chose uh, DVPT because um, it's widely available and uh, it's digital. So uh, we don't need, need our own radio equipment to do that. We can use uh, uh, ordinary TV um, receivers uh, for computers to do that. Uh, they can con connect it to an antenna and we have uh, our, our own software running on the computer uh, and we don't need any um, um, development uh, of uh, equipment and it makes um, the starting costs uh, more uh, inexpensive so we can start with a uh, low budget and that's important for us as a startup. And, um, and DVPT is also very similar to the uh, techniques uh, used uh, around the world. Uh, for example, uh, ATSC used in uh, the United States and Canada is uh, quite similar uh, in programmer's point of view. So um, we could uh, port our system to work with ATSC too. Okay. I'm sure there's some people in my audience that know exactly what uh, the different protocols are and what the relevancy is for them for them both. I won't try to pretend that I do, but um, what I will say is this is obviously a brand new idea and I just heard, um, I forget who it was, someone else on the network had mentioned this, uh, on, on the Voluntary Virtues Network had just mentioned this on a program on uh, Monday evening, I believe, on the 14th. Um, but so as far as I understand, at this stage in the game, you're able to basically just receive blockchain information, but you're not able to push a transaction yet. Is that correct? This is for uh, receiving only. And um, uh, the point that uh, um, what makes this work it, is that we broadcast uh, the transaction and blocks and currency, currency exchange information. So we can build a um, sales terminal which uh, shows the uh, QR code and it allows the user to pay with their own equipment. And um, because um, everyone nowadays have uh, mobile phones and it's easy to um, get in internet with that. Uh, so uh, we decided that that is um, a nice way to combine um, receive only techniques like DVPT, which has very, um, um, large bandwidth and with um, mobile phones which has a uh, very narrow uh, narrow bandwidth and low transmission speed. So uh, transactions are very um, small like uh, half a kilobyte so they can send in um, in any kind of, of data link. So 
uh, sending transactions is not a problem, but receiving all that Bitcoin data in real time is, and, uh, and this um, crypto radio solves that problem with broadcasting. Right, so I guess the, the, there's a few questions I still have, but the technical, one technical question I'm having is, do, so for someone to use the crypto radio protocol or platform, would they need to have really heavy duty equipment on their end or would they need to have um, at least a full node in order to have a, a, a copy of the, like a current car, copy of most of the blockchain so that they're only broadcasting like the most recent tail of it or how does that play out? Um, if they're running a full node, they have to be, uh, it has to be synchronized first, which means uh, that they have to be connected both to the internet and crypto radio, and then when internet connection is uh, taken down, uh, then uh, the system uh, fun f continues to function normally. And um, on the other hand, uh, we can build uh, more uh, simpler uh, devices which uh, don't need the f full blockchain. They need only um, the most recent blocks and uh, transactions. And that's make, that makes it that makes uh, easier to build um, cheap software and hardware for um, uh, devices like parking meters and uh, laundrometers and things like that. Uh, simple devices that only uh, track their payment in real time and uh, allows user to uh, use services in public places, for example. So, so you just blew my mind a little bit. I was gonna. My next question was gonna be use cases. <laughs> yes. This so, is to jump in, but so go flesh that out for me. I mean, paint paint me a picture. How is this thing uh, shaping the future five, ten years from now? Or so. Similar? So, uh, there's this, uh, let's say, vending machine or uh, parking meter or whatever appliance, laundromat, that needs, uh, needs to know that people have paid. So maybe the person uses, uh, uses his uh, mobile phone to make, make the actual payment and people have internet connection in these devices. So the payment is done via that, but now uh, the uh, laundromat has to know, uh, has the person actually paid. Not, so uh, the payment system now can send via crypto radio this information uh, via the DVB-T uh, protocol to this uh, very simple transmitter, uh, or very simple receiver in the laundromat and the laundromat now knows that someone has paid. Right, right. So I mean I'm just, my mind is going to different places but going back to the uh, the parking meter, it would be kind of a lot, I mean the laundromat you can imagine them having a lot of like stable internet connection stuff going on within the building but in a parking meter you have all these meters scattered around the city, it would be pretty impractical to put Wi-Fi adapters and hardline internet connections into each and every parking receiver. But with this, done anyway. But to have your little device in there, just shooting a um, uh, uh, a different frequency, which is kind of in the air, uh, it allows all these meters to maybe be applicated faster and be, be cheaper. And also, like you said, you're really only looking at the the car at that meter. That meter doesn't have to worry about broadcasting a lot of information. It's really just Oh, there's a car here. Better make sure they're paying. Yep, they're paying. Check, and then that's it. You know, so I mean, it's genius in my mind because the simplest, the g most genius things in the world are the simplest things. Everyone's complaint with Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. Well, yeah, great, but what happens if the internet goes down? Um, and that's the mo most obvious use case. The first question for you is to say, well, okay, so obviously, great. If the internet goes down, we had you guys, but in the meantime. What are you guys doing with your project? Is it just sitting there on the shelf waiting to go into use and like doomsday? But no, you guys have a lot of other plans for it, and um, it could be so. September you start broadcasting, and then from there, depending on obviously what happens in the meantime, what are your plans uh, for the next like few months, and then into 2015? Are you going to be releasing any other um, applications or hardware or what? 
Thomas? Um, uh, in my view, uh, we our focus as uh, Coreless, the company behind um, Crypto Radio, is to, to um, promote this technology and get um, paying customers around the world and especially in Finland. But uh, when we, if we um, go to other countries in 2015, uh, then we uh, we need to um, also uh, promote the technology to get um, device manufacturers to do um, two equipment which is uh, using crypto radio signal. Uh, so uh, our our plan as a company is to uh, get a large user base for this. Gotcha. Almost to the same extent to where uh, any proprietor of a new protocol, whether it's the CD-ROM people or the Bluetooth people or the USB, whoever it was that said this protocol is what we want to use, they face the challenge of getting the marketplace to adapt and integrate that that uh, that system. But what's good is, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, is there any other company or group trying to do anything similar? I've never heard of anything like this. So. Uh, Joel had some example of a Bluetooth uh, kind of approach, right? Um, Bluetooth, uh, what? What did you say, Tuomo? Yeah, so so there has been kind of similar ideas to make the uh, make the yeah. pa payment process uh, simple for the user uh, with Bluetooth kind of approaches and uh, Bluetooth terminals for the. Uh, uh, for the, uh, for example, for the parking meters. Yeah, uh, I've seen um, projects which which use Bluetooth uh, to uh, move uh, to transmit the transaction from the mobile phone or some other um, uh, handheld device made for paying the, um, um, for example, parking uh, and um, but. The big uh, problem with them is that uh, you still need internet connection on the receiver side, and um, it's more common to have um, have a um, internet connection in mobile phone than in uh, the device that receives the payment, like a parking meter. Uh, so uh, because we all have uh, internet access. Uh, on our pockets, so we can use that to uh, transmit the data, and that that makes uh, that makes this pro project uh, revol revolutionary uh, because um, we use uh, current infrastructure so geniusly. Right, right. So if people want to find out more, I'm looking at your website. Is it? I have crypto radio dot. K O O D I L E H T O Kudolito dot F I. I put the link in the show notes or pop it up on the screen. But is there a shorter link or a easier way to get to the domain? Or that's it. That's a current uh, project uh, project domain. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe we I'm should. I'm gonna knock you guys. I'm sorry if it came off that way. <laughs> Maybe we should uh, get some <laughs> easier one. <laughs> CryptoRadio.fl, CryptoRadio.com. You should get a bunch of them and have them redirect either way for the 20 bucks or 50 bucks or 100 bucks on GoDaddy shopping spree. You know. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we <laughs> we like to promote our uh, company as well, so uh, we decided yeah. to have this kind of subdomain. But uh, no, if no, 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 that's smart. That's smart. Then at least you yeah, have yeah. A purpose for that. That's I didn't see that. I'm a marketing person, so I think about these things. Mm -hmm. but, um, so I really appreciate your guys' time. I know we could probably talk all day about the, the nerdy stuff, but I didn't want to lose too many people who are just interested on a higher level. I have it's one final it's all in the text. You, you can read about the technical side from this website. Yes. Um, I have one other question, too, and then you guys can take the floor if you have any other things you want to add. Um, my final question is because what initially attracted me to this project was, okay, great, if the Internet goes down for some reason, whether it's the government or whether it's an EMP device or whether it's a, a, a solar flare or something to that effect, all the doomsday scenarios out there, 
you know, before the mesh network goes up or whatever, is this an alternative? Is this a solution? Is this a stopgap? Or is this maybe just the, the groundwork for that? Uh, either one of you guys can jump in. Um, I think this is uh, ground, groundwork for this because uh, in pilot we still don't have a um, very, um, uh, how do you say, um, fault tolerance system because we are experimenting with uh, the technology. But uh, in, in future when there are multiple alternative um, ways to transmit the blockchain and transactions like satellites and um, digital TV and whatnot, we can then combine these technologies to um, listen to them, uh, each other and broadcast all the, all the blocks that uh, they receive. So um, um, uh, this alone does not uh, make Bitcoin uh, very more tolerant to, um, uh, for example, internet, blocking internet connection, because this also connects the internet right now. Uh, but in future, we need more alternative ways to connect the blockchain, and then we can uh, combine the technologies to create really, um, really full tolerant system. And uh, that having been said, uh, crypto radio still improves the Bitcoin network because more redundancy means uh, it's more uh, usable for all of us. So uh, the blockchain is not uh, dependent on, on one technology only. Correct. Yeah, Tuomo, I think that's 100% on, on point. And also, you know, I don't know what the legality is around, uh, I should know better uh, for Finland, but I, I'm trying to learn, you know, all the global, you know, things, but uh, in terms of like IP and everything, but regardless of that, certainly this is going to wake some people up to more different alternative ways to um, utilize not only Bitcoin itself, but just blockchain technologies writ large and say, well, we're just talking about data. So if we can transmit um, a video signal, like a television signal over air or over radio signal, why can't we transmit Bitcoin blockchain information as well? And I can picture a world in the future where you have a little handheld device that's, you know, five, ten bucks. It's a, you know, a hard wallet and it's a crypto radio enabled broadcast device. You could just get up NFC close to someone and click them, you know, a couple of millibits. Um, we're not there yet, but, you know, with the community and with you guys setting the groundwork, I think five, ten years from now, people could be clicking Bitcoin at each other like we give high fives now. Just like click, 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 paying, paying off the grid and, you know. But um, I really appreciate your time. Um, any other final thoughts or questions or things you want to tell the audience? So... Uh... Contact us, visit our website. Uh, uh, if you have any ideas or uh, suggestions for us, please tell us and be in contact. Excellent. Um, I think the entire crypto community uh, is thankful for your guys' work and your effort and uh, the promise that you bring for, for a little bit more security, a little bit more redundancy, like you said, to Omo, for the, uh, for, the, for the blockchain enthusiasts out there like, like ourselves. Um, Everyone, we're going to have the link pop up on the screen. We're going to have the link down in the show notes. And do make it over to their site, learn about this, become aware of this, and stay um, close to this project. And uh, that way, when, when there are opportunities for us to get involved and to support uh, any applications or use cases or companies, uh, we need, once, once this develops, I'm going to have you guys back on the program if possible. And if we need to do a tweet campaign to get people to, to tweet at, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z company to take your take your service and bring you guys on. Uh, Bitcoin has to get behind something like this, and, and the crypto community has to get behind this. So, thank you guys for what you're doing, and thanks for coming on the program. And uh, we'll, we'll hopefully have you back. Thank, thank you. you. All right, guys, take it easy. Yep. Yeah, bye bye. Bye.